Brett, I want you to stay with us for just a, moment, a few moments, if you can. You know, this case, as you've said, has been years in the making. So I'm joined now by Aaron Wiley, who is a former assistant U.S. attorney. So, Aaron, you know, I don't know anyone uh, who has been watching this case uh, who su is surprised or who's not surprised at all that it's taken uh, this long. It's, this has been quick. We thought it would be months going on this. Yes. Well, one of the things that you have to remember is at the very beginning, I'm not going to say it was a, there was certainly a change in course when Neely dropped out. When Neely dropped out, there's evidence that's directed towards her and direct evidence that's directed towards John Wiley Price. Okay, Neely, we're talking about one of the other defendants in Absolutely. terms of this, this, this whole thing going because, on. Because also you have more lawyers sitting at the table, and, and unfortunately, as a lawyer, I must admit, the more lawyers you have, the longer things take. <laughs> okay. Now, we should tell people that all of this changed dramatically, came to a screeching halt yesterday when, when, when Barbara Lynn, the, the judge in this case, uh, said that she's had some real problems uh, with the, the more serious charges in this case with talking about bribery and the mail fraud and she's got some problems with how the prosecution presented its case yes well remember that, that a lot of that stems from from what was happening with the evidence being turned over with the discovery she's had several problems and once you start having problems you start looking at things with a critical eye she's always going to be fair but she's certainly looking at the government with a critical eye because this case as you pointed out has been years in the making We've had plenty of time, we, I, I'm not with the office anymore, I was with them for 16 years, but they've had plenty of time to smooth out all of that, and so it's surprising when you have these foibles, these hiccups, and these un unforced errors. Uh, Brett, you've been in, I know that you have been in this courtroom since uh, the, the very beginning, taking a look at this. You've seen uh, the, the, the concerns that the judge has had with all of this. Uh, how about the jury? Has the jury seen any of this? Well, the jury is watching some of this. The jury doesn't know that Judge Barbara Lynn has made the declaration that she will not allow a conviction on the mail fraud charges. They don't know that yet. They do know there has been a little bit of abrasiveness by uh, Judge Lynn toward the prosecution. She's been short with them. And let me just be honest, I don't think the prosecution has been very dynamic in any of its presentation. It was given this huge set of facts. I mean, we talked to so many folks former prosecutors who've said that this was a dynamic indictment. The evidence was there, but what we've watched over the last six, seven weeks has really been one fumble after the next with the prosecution. And I will say in closing arguments today, I was totally unimpressed with the final arguments of prosecution. There's a young attorney, defense attorney named Chris Knox, who came in for John Wiley Price and he knocked their socks off. The guy was very passionate. He was very literate. He was very poignant in his remarks and unless right now at this moment prosecutors are stepping up their game I'm telling you the jurors are sitting there right now going we're not sure who to believe again this is a very complex case how much of this does the jury understand that remains to be seen you know uh, John Wiley Price's supporters have been saying all along that they've got some very real concerns and what this really amounts to is, is the FBI primarily targeting uh, African-American elected officials uh, they look back at the Al Lipscomb the, the late Al Lipscomb the late co councilman uh, Don Hill the former mayor pro tem of Dallas who's now in prison Terry Hodge of course a state uh, a state uh, lawmaker all of that and saying that this is tied to that that this is not just this this specific case well in in candor Perception can be reality, but it depends on where you're from and, and from which lens you look. For some people, it's that people would say, these folks that, that all were, were found guilty before, uh, that, that they were doing what they were alleged to have been doing. Now, on the flip side, the problem is, is that you don't have, an, and let's just the elephant in the room, is, is, is race. That you don't have folks that are similarly situated that have been prosecuted by the government. So you do have that perception that whether it's true or not, I'll tell you this, it sure would have been, been easier had this case been tried four years ago. Four years ago, you would have been under a, a, an Obama administration, you would have had Eric Holder, and you would have been able to push away some of those things. That's where the case began, but today we're in a different administration, and feelings are different. Okay. Aaron Wiley with us today. Thank you. Appreciate you being with us. Brett Chip also with us today. News 8 is going to be uh, at the courthouse throughout the deliberations. We'll bring you the verdict on air and at WFA.com and, of course, on Facebook and Twitter.